Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode we will bring you our favourite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you and we are here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more. You create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to our episode. I'm so delighted to introduce you to Chanel Coldwell. Welcome, Chanel. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited that you're here and for our conversation and see what evolves from our conversation conversation today. So for those of you that are new to Chanel, Chanel helps people, helps single women who are tired of being mistreated in relationships and are ready to be in loving, healthy and committed relationships. And Chanel helps women stop toxic relationship cycles using her unique quantum hypnosomatics technique. Oh, I have to tell us about that. Allowing them to come out on the other side, healed, ready, and excited to love again and know how to do it. Oh my word, this is just such a beautiful mission that you have. How did you get to do what you're doing today? Oh, well, you know, as you can imagine, my journey started out with me being chronically single and not understanding why I just kept meeting just bum after bum after bum. And then it was like, one day my boyfriend got me kicked out of my place. I lost my job. And I was just feeling like, why does this keep happening to me? And I remember looking in the mirror, like, maybe you are responsible for some of this, right? You chose them. And so that's when I decided, like, I'm going to start becoming the woman that that is going to be accepted by the husband I want. Because at, at that moment, right? I was accepting men that wanted a, a alcoholic party girl, right? So, like, <laughs> but I didn't want that kind of husband. So I really started digging into who I really wanted to be and stopped drinking as much. And then it was like my world aligned and my friend called me. She's like, I have a room for you. And then I went to a job fair, got a job. And the job was walking distance to my new place. And I met my husband there. And within six months, we were engaged. One year I was married and I was pregnant on my honeymoon and it's been 15 years and it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> so um, yeah, in that journey, after we got married, I really thought that uh, it would be perfect because that's all I asked for, right? But depression and the baggage that I brought with me in my relationship after about, I don't even know how many years it was, um, it's like five years. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, um, I fell apart. I had really bad postpartum depression. I was suicidal. It was really bad. And finally, my friend told me, you have everything you've ever asked for. You just don't see it. And I felt like that was the moment where I was like, whoa, like I'm complaining <laughs> about all the things I asked God for. And so that was the moment I really dug deep and went down the rabbit hole of spirituality. And then when I figured it out, I'm like, ah, oh, saved my marriage, healed myself. And I'm like, I got to tell as many women as I can. So we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accepted. <laughs> You're on yeah. the path. Wow, this is incredible. And wow, what a whirlwind to right. had all those things line up for you. I love how that, you know, you're on the right path when it's the flow is there. And right. it's like a jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? Everything, it sounds like everything just suddenly slotted into place. Right. It's like you're in the vortex, right? They say that in a lot of those books, you know, and it's everything you want is just fitting perfectly into your life. So it was really exciting when I knew, okay, I think I'm doing something right here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And so along your journey, um, you somewhere along the way created your unique quantum hypnosomatics technique. Tell I us do. about that, because I, I just all those words together. I love I know <laughs> it was like, you know, 
they, you know, when I started looking, when I was doing all my healing journey, I'm studying this thing and studying that thing. And I found that they all had some new name, right? And I'm like, what is this? And it made me so excited to learn about it because it was something new. And the more I realized that these are very similar, they're just someone's take on things that were already there. And then I took a look at how I help women heal. And I was trying to fit everything that I do to help women heal in one like word. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, <laughs> how do I explain this? And I'm like, energy healing, body work, hypnosis, a mindset, you know, everything. And I'm like, and I just spit it out one day and I'm like, this has a nice ring to it. This is what we're going to call it because it really does embody all of those things because I feel like it is necessary for holistic healing. Yeah. So true. And, and I love what you talk about, um, the mind-body connection, because it is so, so key. And I think, uh, I mean, we can't heal without that connection. I think that's certainly what was missing from it. Like I've got a back in the day when I did my psychology degree, there was no mention of the connection with the with the body. You know, I'm showing my age here now. Um, so it's just incredible that that has been become more mainstream and people are really understanding that you cannot have true healing without that connection with, with, with the body. I, I agree. And I think that that is what's missing from Western um, medicine. It's like mm -hmm. everything on Western medicine is like a puzzle. Like, oh, your arm hurts? Well, let's look at your arm. You know, this hurts? Let's look at that. Um, but in Eastern medicine, it's like, so what is your emotions looking like? They look at it as like a whole pie. If one thing's hurting, so what else could possibly be the key? And I think when medicine actually starts to make that shift, we'll see the everyone's health turning around, I think, for the better, definitely. Oh, my word. It's, it is. It's like poles apart, isn't it? You've got the medical model and then the uh, and then the holistic model. And it's an, or how people call it the alternative model. It's like, no, the, the woo -woo. alternative. Yeah, woo-woo. <laughs> right. We were here first. Woo-woo was here first before the medical model came into right. play. Thank you very much. Medical model, you're the alternative model. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, it's very screwed up in that way. Um, I would love to to dive into uh, more because I think one of the the things that really resonates about the work that you do is in relation to helping people um, recover, heal, break free from toxic relationships. Um, right. Back in the day, uh, I used to, I was just trying to think how long ago it was, uh, um, 2013, I started working for social services. And, and one of the things in my time I was working there was um, leading on domestic abuse and developing services for people who were affected by domestic abuse and sexual abuse. And so um, when we in the kind of um, people understand around toxic relationships, so often they don't kind of recognize themselves as being in an abusive relationship necessarily, because that kind of language can feel quite, quite triggering. But I think there's so many people out there that may not recognize that they're in a toxic relationship until they start having the conversations. What are the kind of things that people could kind of listen out for, recognize within themselves that actually their relationships got a little bit toxic? Well, I think first and foremost, how you feel. Like if you're not feeling safe and happy with your partner, that's a red flag. If you are questioning whether you should bring up how you feel about something to your partner because you don't know how they'll respond, that's a red flag, you know? And it's not like a regular, like, oh, I don't want to be like messy and, you know, start an argument. But like, if you think that something that's truly bothering you and you're worried to bring it up because you know that they're going to get mad or yell, that is very toxic. Or if you find out, I mean, and, and a lot of times we're toxic too. I mean, before we're aware, you know, for me, I didn't realize that I was antagonizing with the way that I would bring things up with my husband. I'd be like, well, you. And so the way that he was brought up, he was always in um, combat with his sister. So it took him back to his inner child, right? Whenever he gets attacked and then he would attack back and we would argue and just little switches was like, Instead of me doing that, I started saying, well, I feel, and I led with that. And then it's like, it allowed him to not feel attacked, you know? So just so many different things, but I'd say your feelings, if you're scared, if you don't feel safe, and if you have questions about whether he's the right person all the time, whether you should leave all the time, that is your intuition, like blaring at you to get out. So that's what I would say to definitely look out for. 
I love that. Just some really tangible ways that people can start to, I think it can be giving ourselves permission to acknowledge the feelings that we're, we're feeling inside before it starts to escalate. One of the things that I saw all the time is things didn't get better on their own. And often people would think, oh, they'll just suddenly change or I'm going to suddenly change. They're not going to change without that self-awareness um, and commitment and 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 intention. And um, we have to we can only take responsibility for ourselves, can't we? We can't uh, change the other the other person as much as right. people might like to. It is so true. And I think for me, when I connected, I mean, there were so many layers to my cha my change and my awakening, but it was the connection that the law of vibration was a big one. It's like, you know, it's not just you attract like attracts like, it's that everything in the universe has a frequency, a vibration, but so do your thoughts and feelings and emotions. And so if I feel like I've been betrayed or I have that fear, then I'm carrying that fear vibration with me. And so when I go out into the world, I'm attracting other people with that same vibration. And so now it's like a dog whistle into the world, right? And those toxic men that are broken, just like us, you know, they may not um, project their toxicity into the world, like the same way we do, but it's still the same frequency. And I think that's hard for people to accept that maybe that evil toxic man is on the same frequency as you, even if you're a healer, even if you are kind, right? It's still the pain frequency. And so acknowledging that is huge. It's huge. I, I love what you said earlier, which links into this around, you, you reflected that you were being toxic too. And I, I really liked how you framed that as in, it's the behavior, not who you are. Right. If that makes sense. So this evil toxic man, is behaving in this man is behaving in a toxic way right. he, he might be evil but he might not be because it's that projection isn't it that we can put on put on another and then that just creates that energetic resistance um between each other this is this is massive and one of the things that um i reckon recognize that when people have been in a toxic relationship or are coming out the other side it can have a massive knock on people's confidence how do you think that affects people's self-trust intuition for, for them moving forward because I think in all aspects of life that's our that's our superpower right I think for you to get out of relationships and to avoid them your self-trust and intuition is key because that's what we were talking about earlier when you have those feelings inside so when we're young, you know, we are free and carefree. So about the age zero to seven, you know, our subconscious mind is just letting everything in, right? Including the negativity of our parents a lot of the time or our environment. And so, and then after that, it's either repetition or trauma into our subconscious mind. So we don't realize that we're having these doubts about ourselves, or maybe someone was like, kids are supposed to be seen and not heard, like be quiet, don't be loud, don't do this. And so the things that were innately like natural to you, you've now learned to quiet that. And so over time, your intuition, you've actually pretty much learned how to make it shut up, you know? And so learning how to reconnect with that intuition where you're feeling it. And not only that, but self-trust, meaning I have this feeling and I trust it and I'm going to make the decision to do what's best for me every single time. Then you don't even have to trust anyone else in the world. It's unnecessary because you trust yourself. And then you don't have to feel bad about anything that's happened because you truly understand that it was because of that disconnect that the things are as they unfold. But I do challenge everyone listening to possibly even think about it in a different way that possibly your spirit came to this, this plane wanting to experience everything and even sometimes pain. And so Although it doesn't feel good and although you're making this change, just do it with no like resistance because it is a part of the full journey and just try to enjoy each moment, even when it's painful. And I know that can be difficult, but it is possible because there is orgasmic childbirth. And if women can do that, <laughs> with that then we can do this. <laughs> Now there's a phenomenon that they don't tell tell you about in in your uh, 
antenatal classes they're like right. have this have this heavy hardcore drug <laughs> knock yourself out <laughs> i'll take the drug i'm not going to be a hero today <laughs> I just have yeah. these <laughs> yes this is this is so true i love what you were saying around being able to really move beyond um beyond that doubt and beyond that aspect of it's those layers of where we start to judge ourselves because we've been picking it up in the environment that, that, that that's around us to be able to really embody that self-trust and that intuition because intuition is always right I've never met anyone who said my intuition was was way off you know it got it got it wrong that day normally it's the interference of the ego that's set things a cropper not intuition right and I think when I first started my healing journey I read that book um it's a new earth awakening your life purpose from Eckhart Tolle that -hmm. was the first book that had me realize there was two voices in my brain like and I tested it out so in the morning I got up and I just listened and I could hear the voice that knew that I wanted to lose weight which was my higher self my intuition was like get up and work out girl and then my ego was like just hit the snooze. It'll be all right. You know, <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. And our higher self gives us those instructions all day long, because I truly believe that that part of us is our soul that's been here so many times and knows exactly how to get to where we want to go every time. If we were to just tune in and listen to those instructions, we'd make it to our point Z every time so much faster. <laughs> so true. So true. Um, and I think that aspect that it, it's learning to listen to our higher self and not the other voice, because the other voice can sound louder. Right. And we're so used to listening to that one that when you start to make the switch, we have to be so conscious about it to really, pay, like you're saying, really pay attention to yeah. these different voices in your head. Yeah. And people will often say that it's like one's on the left and one's on the on the right. Like you can position where you're hearing that voice or sensing sensing that voice. Does that resonate? Absolutely. I I mean I definitely feel like I hear the negative on this side more than this side, you know. And it's it's something that I like. I'm assuming that other people are like myself. That before that moment reading that book, I thought all of my thoughts were my own. And I never considered there was two voices because everyone says that that's crazy, right? To hear two voices is crazy, you know? So I never considered that. So if you listening at home have never considered that there's two voices, I think you, you've you already acknowledged the second voice, but maybe haven't given it a title or a name, but it's absolutely there. And when you can become the observer of that those voices, then it's like, okay, now we can make progress because now we can isolate the negative one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, have you read the book, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer? No, I have not. I've heard oh, so much about it. Chanel, you'll love it. The time? Okay, I'm writing, I'm writing it down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's incredible. Um, there's a, a, a section in there where he gets you to observe the voices and the way he describes the exercise um, he he I can't remember how he phrases it but basically it's it's you know who who's the person who's the essence of you that's watching all of this show going on in your consciousness right. that that observer is the true you right and it is so powerful it was one of those paragraphs you know when you read it in a book and you have to kind of go oh that was deep I've right. just got to go and sit with that for a few days and come back right. to it, contemplate it and really recognize that there's just so much programming that we're just listening to these noise, this noise in our head. We're listening to these thoughts that our nervous systems triggers. But then we don't believe the thoughts that we're hearing in our head. And that's not even who we are. And it's being able to really start to get to that, those layers beneath that noise in our brains to come back to that place of being our authentic selves it's such a beautiful journey it really is and I think for me realizing that the end point wasn't the the goal it's like mm. now every day the present moment and the more I stayed in my present moment and didn't you know dwell in the past or worry about the future is when I really was feeling the most peaceful and it's like, wow, like this journey daily part of me where I just really try to avoid, 
identifying things. I try to avoid identifying myself or, you know, worrying about all this other stuff. That's really the the zone of just peace. And like, when you can do that, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's such a beautiful thing. It really is. I think that's ultimately what everyone is, is searching for on one of the, on one level is having that peace of mind. To, it is truly a gift to say that we have it. And and I think particularly if someone's been through to- toxic relationships and coming out, there's no peace of mind there to right. be able to, to move beyond that and to start to really have that peace of mind. One of the things that um, I know that is important to, to your heart is, and you touched on it before, is around you know depression and anxiety. Tell me a little bit more about how you how you work with helping people heal from depression and anxiety. What are the big things that perhaps if someone's listening to this and they are recognizing that they may have some, some of these uh, emotions that aren't going away, what words of advice have you got for them? Well, you're going to have to strap on your, your weights. It's called your mental weights because this is going to be a training. You got to train this brain. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> but it is healable. Um, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I'm just, I, I I don't care what they've said. I've been there and it is healable. It is something that you can heal. But I'm also going to say, if you are struggling to get out of bed and you are worried, thinking about killing yourself, take the meds, <laughs> take the meds. It's okay. I don't care. I took them for a little bit just so that I could get out of bed and like make it to the day. <laughs> and then once I learned the tools as I read and as I strengthened those muscles of staying in the present moment, because that was key and gratitude for me was key. Then you can wean yourself off or get doctor's help. I didn't get doctor's help, but I would advise you to do do it the right way, right? <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, once I realized that my young, my inner child was crying. And to be honest with you, I feel like depression is our soul saying, we're done playing this role that you thought society wants you to play. This isn't you and I'm done, right? We're, we're, we're done. We don't want to be in corporate America no more, girl. This is not for you. Okay. So, and literally my life changed after that. Cause I did quit that job and I went right into entrepreneurship and I muscled through it, but that's it. And then ask, after you start making those changes, then you got to acknowledge that other voice, that negative voice that before you didn't even hear. So I didn't even know all day I was hearing, you're not good enough. The kids will be fine without you. Like they, your husband needs to find a better wife because you're not doing it good enough. You should have your house clean. You should be able to do this. You should be able to do that all day long. Like, ah, and then it was finally like, you know what? So what if my house is dirty, bruh? Like, <laughs> like I can't right now. Okay. <laughs> and then um, it's like I had to start letting it be okay. And I remember, um, especially with around the house cleaning, that was a lot for me. And I, I felt a lot of shame because my husband came from a household where his mom could do it all. She didn't do what I did, but that part, she was good at it, you know? And so I remember being like, I have to do this, I have to do that all the time. And I drove, I was driving and I saw this woman, she was homeless outside of her tent and she had her music going and she was sweeping the curb in front of her tent, jolly. And I thought, wow, like she'd kill to clean my house. Mm. She would love it. Like this would be her dream to live in my home and clean yeah. it no matter how messy it is. And it's like, here I am complaining that I have to do it. Like, no, I get to do it, you know? And it was huge. And then uh, I read something somewhere was like, volunteer for your life. Because when you volunteer, you don't complain. You know, it's like, just volunteer. Wow. And I'd be like, I'll clean the kitchen. And I would say it internally. And it just took away all the resentment. And I just would turn my music on and do it. And it was just those little shifts throughout my life that just made it so much easier. Just so much easier. Oh. Yes. I, that's <laughs> such an incredible shift when you were saying about volunteer for your life. Yeah. I really can feel that and how often we, it's resentment, isn't it? Resenting those different parts of our life because <laughs> that voice is going, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> yeah. um, like you said, you get to clean your house. Um, and the lady who was sweeping in front of her tent 
that's such an incredible lesson for, for us all in terms of where can we bring in more joy and laughter and showing up for ourselves more um, and bringing that, that essence into our life. I love that aspect about volunteering for your life because it just invites that component for each and every one of us to step forward and to show up show up for 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 more how have you seen that um impact uh, as you volunteer in your life more how what has been the the ripple effect for you um just the resentment is gone um i also feel like it's allowed me to um fail at things and and it be okay You know, it's like if you volunteer to clean, you know, the car wash, like you can suck at it. But like, bro, I volunteered. Don't worry about how I do this car. Right. (laughs) So it's like you don't have to be perfect. Just volunteer and show up for yourself, because the more you do that, it's like um, there was this saying that someone said it's like. uh, uh, God, it's going to come to me, but it was like it'll come. Yeah, it'll come. But anyway, so the more you show up for yourself, no matter if you're good or bad at it, it's like, I did it, you know? And so then the next time you do it, it doesn't feel as weird. And then you start to feel more confidence, the more you do succeed at it. And then it's like, okay, I can do that. Just like when we were kids, like we didn't quit trying to walk because we fell on our butt so many times, you know, it's like, (laughs) that is, that's an adult fear ridden thing. That's like, we're worried about our status and, you know, what people will think about us and stuff like that. But just when you volunteer for your life, you're just taking messy action and that's okay. You know, (laughs) and that's all you can really do. And just try to quiet the mind as much as possible. For me, uh, meditation was very difficult at first because it was just so much. So instead I took a technique from a psycho cybernetics that book have you heard of that not that book yeah right right so it's like I ask myself those four questions like um is is it um am am I tripping basically so I'm gonna say my own words so first and foremost it's like am I tripping right now is this thought that I'm having realistic and then your next question is is there any reason I have a real reason to believe that this thought I'm having is true And the next one is, would I feel the same way if I was talking about someone else in a similar situation? Like, especially when we talk about ourselves and our body in the mirror, it's like, would you say that to your daughter? Would you say that to your friends? You know, no. And then the last one is, why should I continue to act and feel as if this is true when there's absolutely no reason for me to feel that, for that to, you know, it's not true. And then once you realize, God, I'm tripping, this thought is random, you know, then you can just... I do this thing called a uh, cancel cancel because I feel like our brain is like a, a computer, right? So cancel, cancel, whatever the thought was. And then I replace it with three positive and true statements, um, whether they're true now or later, it doesn't matter, but it's like what you want. And you start to just reprogram those thoughts in your brain because it's got to be repetition or trauma, right? To get in there. So start working today at that repetition and it would really change your life. It really will. It, you're so tr- so true, and I love that. Um, that's such a good brain tattoo for people to remember that what goes in is either repetition or trauma, because it really does. Trauma is that imprint; it's there, isn't it? Our, our brains have no trouble remembering it. Well, they might uh, compartmentalize it, so we can't consciously remember it, but the body is going to completely remember it. And even if we're like, I don't know what's going on, why, why this has started to happen, but the the, the body knows the score, the the body remembers. So yeah, repetition is absolutely key. And it's a gift that we can um, use that technique to be able to to start to imprint those positive thoughts, which ultimately will completely change, change our identity. Yeah. Oh, Chanel, I love how you help people. I think it's just an incredible mission that you have. And there's so many women out there that need to hear your message and to be able to come and work with you. How can they find out more about, you know, all your things? Where do you hang out in the world? And I know you've got a a free gift as well. So tell us about the free gift too. That'd be fab. Sure. So 
it started with my intuitive empowerment affirmation cards. So I made these beautiful affirmation cards that help you with self-trust and intuition. So it's just like a little positive affirmation. And then I thought like people need more than just that. So I also put a daily action step on each card. So not only do you get the affirmation, but it also tells you one thing to do today to develop that intuition and develop your self-trust. So as you get through the 30 days, you will have been practicing these new techniques that will help you to learn how to listen more and reconnect with your intuition. And then I had this 30 day boot camp some weeks, some months ago. And one of the weeks was a uh, body and soul. And so I took that week, it's a podcast and I just broke it up um, to the, the four or five days that we had. And I also included the live session that I did that week, as well as a heart connection uh, meditation so that you can hear your heart's desires and what it really feels. And there's also an intuition activation meditation in there that's guided so that you can really open up your your intuition and really start to connect. So I just bundled it all up together. So that's what that is. <laughs> I love it. It sounds amazing. The intuitive empowerment bundle. We'll we'll pop the link um, in the show notes so everyone can uh, get get their hands on that. And and where do you ha hang out? So if anyone's driving whilst they're listening and can't scribble things down, where where can they come and find you? Are you on sure. Instagram or all those things? So I'm on Facebook, mostly like most active and it's facebook.com forward slash chat with Chanel. Um, and then on Instagram, um, I'm under Sista Sutra. That's my company name. And uh, yeah, so those are the most popular platforms I'm on right this moment. So that's where you can find little old me. And then my website is sistasutra.com. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. And we'll, we'll pop those uh, in the show notes as well. Oh, this has been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom, your heart with everybody. I truly, truly appreciate you. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I had great conversation. I loved it. Thank you so much. It's awesome. And we hope that you have loved it as well. So if this has resonated, please do let us know on social media, tag us, do share the episode with those that you feel that would benefit from it as well. We would truly appreciate that. And until next time, sending you all lots and lots of love. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.